Hi everyone, this lesson is on skin findings we can see in gastric cancer or stomach cancer. So we're going to talk about different skin manifestations that we can see in patients who have an underlying stomach cancer. Before we talk about those skin findings, let's talk about what stomach cancer is and some of the more common symptoms of stomach cancer. So stomach cancer is a cancer of the stomach. Now there are multiple types of stomach cancer. The most common type is going to be what we call gastric adenocarcinoma. And some other types include gastric lymphoma, gastrointestinal stromal tumor, and gastric carcinoid cancer. Now, there are multiple risk factors for getting stomach cancer, and each of the risk factors is going to be more associated with a particular type of stomach cancer. We're not going to talk about those details in this lesson. If you want more information, please check out my overview of stomach cancer for more information. But some of the risk factors to getting stomach cancer in general include long-term consumption of smoked foods, so any foods with these nitrosamine chemicals in them, having an H. pylori or helicobacter pylori infection. This is a stomach bacteria that can cause stomach ulcers and increase our risk for having stomach cancer. Tobacco smoking is also another risk factor in having chronic gastritis or chronic inflammation of the stomach. These all increase the risk for stomach cancer. And what we find with stomach cancer in general is that it's often a late presenting cancer, meaning that we don't often catch it early on. It's usually going to be something that is detected later on. So that means that the cancer has been there for a longer period of time. And by the time individuals start to experience more significant symptoms, it's already at a later stage of presentation. So that's also important to make note of here because some of the signs and symptoms we're going to talk about, some of these skin findings can help us detect the cancer earlier. So some of the more common symptoms of gastric cancer include nausea and vomiting. You can imagine if you've got a mass in the stomach, it's going to make you feel nauseous and potentially vomit. We can often have abdominal pain as well. So if there's a mass in the stomach, it can push on the stomach and surrounding structures leading to abdominal pain. You can have GI bleeding or gastrointestinal bleeding. This is often going to manifest as hematemesis or vomiting up of blood. So if you've got a cancerous mass in the stomach, it can bleed. So the blood vessels that supply that cancerous mass are often going to be more frail. So they can bleed. So individuals may vomit up blood. And we can also see what we call melina, which is a black, tarry, smelly stool. So if the patient doesn't vomit up the blood, the patient may still end up digesting that blood from the cancer. And that patient's stool will become black from the digested hemoglobin, and it can be very smelly. And then weight loss is also another symptom as well. Often this can be due to not only the cancer diverting nutrients toward itself, toward its own growth, but also from the fact that patients can have early satiety. So if there's a cancerous mass in the stomach, they can feel fuller quicker. So that's also another common symptom. But the topic of this lesson is that gastric cancer can lead to weird skin manifestations. And we're going to talk about those in more detail in the upcoming slides. So the following skin manifestations are going to be what we call perineoplastic syndrome. So perineoplastic syndromes are going to be a systemic manifestation caused by the cancer producing some hormone or some immune chemical. So there's a localized cancer somewhere in the body that's producing some chemicals that leads to a systemic manifestation. That is what perineoplastic syndromes are. And the following are going to be perineoplastic syndromes, and they're going to be rare clinical features of gastric cancer. And they can appear like more common skin conditions that have nothing to do with cancer. So having said all that, the first skin manifestation we're going to talk about here is the sign of lesser trela. So lesser trela sign is something we can see in gastric cancer. It's going to look like this. And lesser trela sign is going to be a sudden onset of many seborrheic keratoses. So seborrheic keratoses are actually a common finding in older patients that have nothing to do with cancer. And what we can often see is that as patients get older, they're more likely to have these types of skin lesions. The seborrheic keratoses are going to be large hyperpigmented papules or plaques. So they're going to be hyperpigmented, meaning that they're going to be darker than the surrounding skin. They're going to be raised, and they can often have an appearance like they've been stuck on to the skin, and they can often be waxy in appearance. And what can happen is patients can slowly develop these as they get older. So that is a relatively common skin finding we can see in older patients. But lesser trela sign is when there's a sudden onset of many seborrheic keratoses. So lesser trela sign is when patients have none of these skin lesions, and then all of a sudden there's a sudden onset of many of them. Another difference between normal seborrheic keratoses and these skin lesions in lesser trela sign is that the 
Lesions in lesser trilaw sign are going to be pruritic, meaning that they're going to be itchy oftentimes. So in older patients with no underlying cancer, the cipri keratoses are not going to be itchy unless there's some clothing that's rubbing against a lesion, for instance, that may lead to some itching in some cases. But with lesser trilaw sign, the lesions are often going to be itchy. So multiple lesions can be itchy with lesser trilaw sign. And then another key distinguishing feature of lesser trilaw sign is that there's a rapid increase in size and number of lesions. So lesser trilaw sign is actually going to be a rare finding of internal gastrointestinal malignancies, including gastric cancer. We can see it with colon cancer as well. And gastric cancer is actually going to be the most common oncological cause of lesser trilaw sign. And the pathophysiology as to why lesser trilaw sign occurs in gastric cancer is not entirely understood, but it's believed to be due to production of large quantities of cytokines, so immune system chemicals, and growth factors by the cancer cells. Another possible skin manifestation of gastric cancer is malignant acanthosis nigricans. So this is what acanthosis nigricans is. So acanthosis nigricans is going to be thickened, hyperpigmented skin lesions. So it's going to be thickened, so it's going to be a plaque. It's going to be hyperpigmented meaning that it's going to be darker than the surrounding skin. It can often be described as velvety in appearance. It's most often going to be found in intertriginous areas, so anywhere where skin meets skin, so we can find it in the axillae or the armpits, the groin, etc. And it's going to be symmetric if you see it on one side or in one armpit, you're going to see it in the other side as well. Now, acanthosis nigricans is actually going to be a relatively common skin finding. We can see in different types of patients, especially patients with obesity and type 2 diabetes. So anything with insulin resistance can cause skin lesions like this to occur. We can also see it in polycystic ovary syndrome, for instance. But with certain types of cancer, this can be a perineoplastic syndrome. So this is where we would call it malignant acanthosis nigricans. Now, if it is caused by an underlying cancer, it's going to often have a sudden onset and be progressive meaning that it can occur all of a sudden. So one day you may see that you have acanthosis nigricans all of a sudden, and it can worsen over time. This is going to be different compared to acanthosis nigricans caused by obesity and type 2 diabetes, for instance. In obesity and type 2 diabetes, the acanthosis nigricans is going to be a slower development. So again, this can be a perineoplastic syndrome in gastric adenocarcinoma and other types of cancers as well. But again, gastric adenocarcinoma is going to be the most common cancer that causes malignant acanthosis nigricans. And if we see this as a potential feature in patients, so if they have a sudden onset that's progressive, it's often going to be predictive of poor prognosis. So in patients who have this as a manifestation of their gastric adenocarcinoma, they often have a poor prognosis. Another possible skin manifestation of gastric cancer is perineoplastic dermatomyositis. So it is again a perineoplastic syndrome. We see that in its name. This is where we see a heliotrope or periorbital erythema. So we see this reddening in and around the eyes. So around the eyes, eyelids, and cheeks. It can appear sometimes like the malar rash in systemic lupus erythematosus. We can also see gautrin papules and gautrin signs. So gautrin papules are these skin manifestations on the knuckles. So they're going to be erythematous, so reddened in appearance, rough and scaly papules. And we can often see these on the phalangeal joints, elbows, and knees. We can also see some other signs and symptoms of this perineoplastic syndrome, including proximal muscle weakness and shawl sign. So shawl sign is this rash around the neck. And this is, again, another rare finding in gastric carcinoma. And we can also see it in other types of cancers as well, including colorectal cancer, hepatocellular carcinoma, so cancer in the liver, and lung cancer as well. And this perineoplastic syndrome seems to be related to certain autoantibodies that cancer cells are producing. Another skin manifestation we can see in gastric cancer is what we call Cronkite Canada syndrome. So Cronkite Canada syndrome is where we see these hyperpigmented macules. Macules are going to be flat skin lesions, less than 10 millimeters in diameter, and they're hyperpigmented, meaning that they're going to be darker than the surrounding skin. We can often see it on the upper body, including the face, neck, arms, and hands. We often are less likely to see it on the lower half of the body. With Cronkite Canada syndrome, we can also see alopecia occurring as well, so hair loss. It can start on the scalp and progress to the whole body. So this is a particular finding in this syndrome. We can also see nail issues occurring as well, including plate separation and discoloration of the nails. This affects fingernails and toenails. And this can also be a rare finding in gastric carcinoma and in metastatic colorectal carcinoma. 
And gastric carcinoma or stomach cancer is going to be an important cause of Cronkite Candida Syndrome because it's estimated that 20% of patients with Cronkite Candida Syndrome will develop gastric cancer if they don't already have it. So again, very important to look for hyperpigmented macules, alopecia, and nail issues. And the last skin manifestation we're going to talk about here is what we call pommel plantar keratoderma. So pommel plantar keratoderma is also known as trike palms. This is where there's areas of epidermal thickening. So there's thickening areas of the skin. It's often going to occur diffusively. So it's going to occur in multiple areas of the body, but we can often see it on the palms of the hands. That's going to be the characteristic area. So palms of the hands, fingers, and the soles of the feet. There's a sort of rugose appearance. So it can often have a very wrinkled look to it. Now it's also important to note that pommel plantar keratoderma can also be hereditary. So patients can be born with this. And it's also associated with acanthosis nigricans. So if you have acanthosis nigricans, you're more likely to also have this as well, or there's some association with these conditions. But again, this is also a potential perineal plastic syndrome of different types of cancer, including gastric cancer, although it's going to be a rare finding. Please check out my full lesson on gastric cancer if you want more information on signs and symptoms, diagnosis, and treatment. And as always, thanks so much for watching and hope to see you next time.